Uh-oh. Hey guys, we're talking to John Marler. John Marler's been traveling Texas. You know, he's spoken to many groups. He speaks to just about anybody he can. Hey, John, welcome to FBG Live. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate the opportunity to get the word out one more way. <laughs> so how long have you been speaking about uh, Agenda 21 and traveling the state of Texas? Now we're, do- now we're into the second year. Um, the, the initial um, year was kind of a build-up to where people started understanding who I was and where I was coming from. Uh, I'm getting... Uh, and the and the election was the predominant mindset of most uh, grassroots organizations. So the agenda 21 took back burner. Now it's coming up to front burner. I, one of the biggest things that we can say is a victory is we had the National Republican Executive Committee come out with a resolution that. Uh, it is incumbent upon every American to fight Agenda 21 in its attempt to usurp the sovereignty of the United States. And they go on and, and, and make more more statements. Uh, hey, what I'm finding is too many of us have sat back thinking that we've elected conservative, but we never defined conservative. And we have been literally lied to by the vast number of Republicans and Democrats because all they're really interested in is how can they preserve their power base. A local congressman here has made a statement that term limits will happen when God or my wife calls them. And that shows the arrogance of, quote, a conservative congressman that has this attitude that the office is owned by him. He's not really representing us. He may call himself a conservative, and in the majority of votes he does vote uh, conservative, but in critical votes when it comes down to it, he votes the establishment. Uh, National Defense Authorization Act had a paragraph in there called the Hate Crimes Enforcement Act. It literally allows the president to determine what is a threat, and there is no definition of what that can be. There's no requirement for him to say, okay, I have to go to court to arrest John Marler. He can say, go arrest John Marler, put him in wherever, and we'll get around to him. So John knows a lot of technical details about Agenda 21. That's why he makes such a great speaker on it and why he's so sought after. Actually, I hear his name come up quite a bit as I move around, and I'm always wanting to talk about, you know, John Marler. And, uh, but John, what I found about you is probably that whole two-year span in, you know, your stick to itness to speak wherever you're asked to come speak to within reason. Within <laughs> reason. Right. And so I, I want to hear some of those stories. Now tell me about a story from the South. Okay, the the one that uh, the deepest south that we've gone is Harlingen, Texas, and we went down there for about eighty five or so people, and they came in and the first thing I always ask is how many of you know about Agenda Twenty One, and out of the eighty five, three people raised their hand. At the end of the uh, presentation, I was uh, I, I I I opened it up for questions and answers and. Questions like, how can our congressman, how can our city, how can our county be doing this? And I go back to a slide that I have that uh, uh, Lenin uh, and Stalin both uh, referred to those who implemented their processes, their their uh, uh, subversive in, uh, methodology and everything like that, as useful idiots. And one of the things I keep pointing out to them is these useful idiots are always, every single time a despot is taken over, the useful idiots are the first executed. And I and the the question comes up, well, why are they why are they targeted like that? And I said, if they can implement it, they can de-implement it, and that is the threat to a despot. And I said, right now we have a tremendous number of useful idiots who will not take time to learn about Agenda 21, will not take time to find out how you can remove it. We had a county up in Maryland that literally came in with a new board that had been uh, groomed with a 
Agenda 21, had been instructed on all the facets, you know, gone through a presentation like mine, uh, and, and in depth. And when they came into office, their first act was to throw out every law on the books and require the city staff to bring it in with documentation as to how it meets constitutional muster. Wow. Now, that is happening. We're, we've got other counties that are going to do that. Uh, we're getting into the, the war, and I, I, I want to tell everybody, this is not a conspiracy. A conspiracy is a secret uh, method of producing a result. A, an agenda is a step-by-step -step process of accomplishing something. So they called it Agenda 21. They literally want, by the year 2050, to have this utopian society that Marx proclaimed back in 1833 to be implemented in the United States. How does that, how is it going to look? If you take a map of the United States, you can see a pretty broad base uh, spread of population across the, the, the entire 50 states. If we go to Agenda 21's biodiversity assessment program, you have a list of items that are no longer uh, to be allowed for uh, and, and classified as unsustainable. Oh, okay. What's unsustainable? The unsustainable items in the biodiversity uh, assessment is uh, man-made caves. Well, what is that? Your homes, your individual homes. They want everybody in stacking packs, uh, so forth. So by the time you go through this list of unsustainables and you look at what they have created, and a map was created by a man who just died last week, uh, the biodiversity map of the United States shows 85% of the property not allowing human activity. Hey, what about Fredericksburg? How are we doing? Fredericksburg is going to be a pocket so small and so regulated that your choice is going to move one way or the other to San Antonio or to Austin. What do you, mean? you will be sure, by 2050, they would love to see you out of here. Here's the other horror. The comments that are made by the leaders, uh, Maurice Strong and so forth, is they continue to talk about a world population of 500 million people. Do you know what our current United Nations recognized population worldwide is? Almost 7 million. How do you get to 500 million? Well, I'm not, well, <laughs> kill people, I guess. Right. Or let them die. Or I've got a video of, do you know who Z, uh, the big new Brzezinski is and was? Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with Zabigny. Okay, the big new has a video that was uh, taped in 2010 where he makes a very clear comment. It is easier to kill a million people than it is to control them. That's well, pretty deep, man. It is. And this is why when, when people start talking to me, the first thing I see is their eyes roll back. Oh, no, here's another conspiratist. So, so, so let me throw a word at you. To produce, when I continue to produce documentation of every statement I make, it blows their mind. And it comes back down to that one statement that nobody believes that the people they've entrusted to government are really designing the world uh, without them. Hey, does the name uh, Edward Mendel House ring a bell to you at all? No. Not yet. Okay. Well, you might want to take a look at that. It's quite fascinating. It, he's part of a group called the Chatham House. And oh. He's... Um, Cecil Rhodes and Edward Mendel House were involved in Chatham House. And Chatham okay. House was a, an early eugenics platform. I believe they started the uh, Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, you can do the research, prove or disprove me, you know. I'd be right. Interested. But anyways, um, guess they want everybody to move out of Fredericksburg, huh? 
Well, they, they want everybody off all the property that they have deemed to be. Uh, you, you now have, through executive orders, the creation of the Wilderness Project, the, the uh, 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 all kinds of different projects that now cover the entire United States. Uh, every, every inch of space is now under executive order. And everything on them since uh, an executive order just a few months ago called uh, 13575 literally places everything produced by that land to be a resource that is controllable by the President of the United States. So if he declares that the water in your uh, backyard, your pool, is a resource, he can require you to drain it and give it back to the city or whatever. These are the things that are encroaching on our lives, and they're encroaching through executive orders, which are non-legislated. The Congress has a 90-day window to rescind it. But each, any time that's ever been attempted, it, was, it died because the words, all he has to do is change one word and reissue it, and we start this process all over again. So the processes of executive orders, the processes of non-government organizations, the process of private partner, private-public partnerships, all requiring the citizenry to stay out of this and not have oversight of these actions is happening. Right now there's a big battle brewing in New Mexico where the uh, uh, Department of Interior is attempting to declare a great large area of grazing and pasture lands as a national monument. Now, the monument is to the Old West of the United States. But if they can get the president to declare this enormous area as a monument, that's the first step in calling it a wilderness area. And a wilderness area on this biodiversity map is an area where you have to have a permit to take, put one footstep on it. Once it's declared a wilderness area, the desire, as, as it's going to come up in, in Rio de Janeiro, is that they want to declare it a world heritage area. And they're literally going to turn over the sovereignty of that whole area to the United Nations. So what are some of the World Heritage Zones around the country? Oh, there's a, well, there's one in every place. Uh, uh, we are, uh, my wife and I are going on a cruise, and we're going to go to Barcelona. We're going to uh, Malaga. We're going to Palma de Mallorca. We're going to uh, Tenefri. And every single one of them have very large areas that have been declared World Heritage Sites. And the manipulation, the maintenance of it, and so forth, is all at the uh, behest of the United Nations. The, Spain has turned over sovereignty to that. They're all over the, the globe. I mean, you can go to United Nations World Heritage, and you will see that almost I don't, I don't think there's a country other than New Zealand that does not have a World Heritage site. Well, is it U.S. property if it's a World Heritage zone? Well, right, uh, currently they have not implemented a World Heritage in the United States, but they were, they're, they're, they're designing the efforts to do that. That's why all these executive orders from Obama. Now, keep in mind these executive orders are not just Obama. They were Clinton. They were W. They were HW. All the presidents have gone in with executive orders that implements Agenda 21. Uh, as an example, HW gets up before the United Nations and literally makes the statement. Well, let me, let me quote it to you word for word because it, it is a shocking, shocking uh, statement that HW did. Uh, let me pull it up here. Uh, it is the sacred principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter to which the American people will henceforth pledge their allegiance. He did that in February of 1992. That is H.W. This is supposedly a conservative president. He is a one-worlder. Uh, Clinton comes in and creates the President's Council on Sustainability. And he literally has, he, he tells people, do not use the word sustainability. Start talking about uh, green areas and uh, family living areas and things like that, which it isn't. It never will be. And in essence, lie to the American public. 
Uh, it's 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 a horrible battle to see people like that, and and from that you you have uh, areas, uh, Wisconsin, for example. Hey John, let yes, me, let me sidetrack you from Wisconsin okay. a little bit. Hey, um, why don't you tell me more about Fredericksburg? Because I always like to okay. talk about Fredericksburg. Yeah, well, uh, you you have the. Uh, uh, wonder of hiring a brand new city manager who comes in and denies that he knows anything about Agenda 21, yet he has received green awards from a couple of sources. He is doing his best to get Fredericksburg to join ACOG, which is the Alamo City's Council of Governments. Oh, we've joined. Oh, you have joined? Yeah, last night they approved it. Oh, God. And you know, that, that, uh, it's sickening to see it slide that direction. But uh, this city manager has had a conversation with a couple of your citizens. One is Nancy Battle, and he denied knowing anything about this, and yet the first thing he does is, to, is push this ACOG meeting, uh, joining, and ACOG is a non-government organization. I, I don't know if your listeners know what that is, but it's an organization that has no requirement to talk to citizens about anything that they implement. They can build a road wherever they want to build a road. They can do whatever they want to do that's been chartered to them by the federal or the state government without citizens ever voting on it. The, the, the point that makes cities want to join these things is they call it free money which means that they don't have to go to the citizens for a bond election or anything like that. This comes to this ACOG or uh, NCOG or HCOG, uh, Galveston, Houston, you name it. Everybody's involved in one. We have a central Texas COG. Uh, it's all over the state. All of these organizations are designed to remove the citizenry from oversight on what government's doing. So have you done the, people have told me stuff about this ACOG thing, and, you know, they point to this thing called COG in 1967. Do you know anything about that? The yeah. Of Governors? Well, that, the Council of Governors is just one. There's now a Council of Mayors. There's a Council of Green Cities. Uh, there's a council, for, uh, if you go to Texas.gov and just type in NGO, you'll find there's over 50,000. Why are these bad? Why are these things bad? Uh, well, they, uh, the, the first thing that I have about them is that there is no citizen oversight. I did not elect anybody to that board. I don't have any authority. Uh, there's no authority of the citizenry over this board. The authority comes from another <laughs> government panel, for example, the Department of Interior, Department of Transportation, of the federal government, or tech, uh, TxDOT, the organizations are supported by funding from the cities. They have to pay a, 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 an amount to be a member. And then if there's an assessment, the cities pay it out of their general fund. They don't have to go to the citizens. And, you know, it's matching funds from whatever the government uh, block grant is. But it eliminates the citizens from having oversight or authority on what's going to be done with them or to them. And it's all done uh, totally without public knowledge. You never, uh, if you see anything about ACOG or any COG, you find it on the 40th page of a newspaper. You do not find it on front page. ACOG wants to build a road between, uh, you know, Jacksonville and and, and uh, Fredericksburg, uh, four-laner with, uh, you know, the uh, area. But they all have to comply. Now, here's the interesting thing. All the things that they do must comply with the United Nations or world, what they call world standards, so that if you build a road, you can't build just a two-lane road and have that cost. You have to have a two-lane road plus a bicycle lane. Why? You know, is there going to be traffic on that road between the area? No, but that's the standard of the world. And in other words, funny, John, is if they built a road right now, I'd probably encourage them to put a bicycle lane in. You know, even though I spoke about you know 
the need to not put bicycle lanes in Fredericksburg. I just don't think that it's proper to be throwing bicycle lanes in when there's no bicyclists here and nobody rides. But I'm dang, you know, I'm going to sit there and ask them to put a lane for me if they're building a new road because I ride a bicycle everywhere. But, you know, I understand where you're coming from with it. Well, do you see my point? I, have, I would not object one iota if there was an election that said, do you want bicycle lanes on this road? But we're not even afforded that opportunity. Right, perfect. This is being dictated to us, which is by definition a criminal act. But you're not being permitted to do this. And this is what COGS have been created for. Uh, Public-private partnerships is where a city government can eliminate the competition and appoint, uh, say, Builder A to come in and build a stack and pack in their city. A stack and pack is a bottom floor of businesses and an upper floor of uh, residences. By themselves, not a problem with me at all. But requirements of twenty of of the twenty fifty project of the United Nations, you and I have to give up our uh, man made cave and move into those things. That's the that's the evil of that whole process, and I still don't get to vote on whether or not that should be done. This is a public private partnership. It is not a citizen involved issue. Well, it's involving my town, it's involving my city, and in the future, it's where the end result is for me to live there. You can talk for hours, can't you, John? I, I really can, because I'm just so, uh, I, I'm so hurt by my, act, my failures to be a diligent, you know, the, uh, what was it that Ben Franklin, somebody came up and says, well, I understand you've given us a republic, and Ben Franklin says, if you can keep it, ma'am, if you can keep it. Yeah, totally. We, so let me get this from you then. So um, last time we talked a, a month or so ago when I was trying to arrange this interview, you told me about a show that you were on on the, on the Internet. And you said it was one of the most fascinating shows because you had point-counterpoint going on with the host. Tell me about that. Well, it wasn't with the host. It was a point-counterpoint discussion with several um, uh, highly involved with the smart meter uh, issue of, uh, in Texas. And we had uh, 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 Centerpoint and uh, Encore. Uh, the Encore vice president of communications was on, on, on this, and we continually bombarded him with the evidences that have now been produced that show a wide variety of horrors happening because of smart meters. What's Encore? Tell me. Encore is a service provider of power in, in an awful large part of the state. Centerpoint is south of you. Uh, Encore is north of us. Uh, I've seen Encore trucks in the in the Fredericksburg area, so I'm I'm, I'm assuming that they somehow are contracting to do things. But uh, there's this mandate that uh, they claim they have, which is not in any state government documentation. And in fact, the man who wrote the bill that passed the legislature made the statement in the in the bill that this is a, an encouragement to go with smart meters if the technology is proven and the utilities have taken it on well I can get part of a 4.7 billion dollar grant from the federal government if I push these things and they're literally uh, one of the statements I make is I consider two of our greatest freedoms is number one the freedom to choose and number two the freedom from a despotic or tyrannical government edict when you talk about smart meters with Encore or with Georgetown Utility, the question comes up, can I opt out? No, you cannot. If I prove that they are unsafe for me, I have a, 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 a medical electrosensitivity issue. I cannot be around that kind of, uh, of uh, wavelength of stuff. Tough. You take these or else you lose your power. 
they have literally taken the power uh, meter off of a uh, off of a house down in Houston that the person says I don't want the smart meter and he, she called the police and the police said ma'am you you don't have to take it but they, they claim it's your meter and I she came out with the bill showing that she's paying for that meter every single month and they still took the meter and disconnected her power, which is illegal under PUC regulations and laws. It doesn't stop them. They have this attitude that, I don't care if we're living in America, you're going to take this despotic edict and live with it. And it's, just, it's a major erosion to our freedom. It shouldn't be an opt-out. It should be an opt-in. We should have the right to choose, not a right to say, hey, wait a minute, I want you to stop that. Now, there's documentation. Here's the horror of it. There is no proof that these things are safe. They claim that they, they have done all the testing. Every test that they have produced, we have been able to show, was not a scientific test. It was never done scientifically. We have six reports around the world that have gone in and done extensive testing, each and every one of them showing major differences. Give you a diff- give you a perfect example. Our Georgetown ta- uh, uh, Georgetown utility spokesman came out and said the radiation from a smart meter is thirty times less than your cell phone. I said, where did you get that information? She said, from the CCST. That's California Council on Scientific Technology. Science and technology. I said, do you realize that everyone in the world that has any electric information and knowledge has come out and denied that that is a scientific test, that it is in fact photocopy or copy word for word from the manufacturer's manuals? Well, no, I didn't know that. And I said, do you realize that I can give you right now six worldwide, well-renowned, total experts on EMF and everything else like that, showing you that not only is it 30 times less than a cell phone, it is 100 times worse than the overhead power lines that we see all over the country. Well, you can believe what you want to believe. We'll believe what we want to believe. And I said, but you don't understand. You are killing people. You are putting things on their house that will upset their pacemakers. You, they will they will interfere with their drip uh, medical systems. They, 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 the interference that has been proven time and time and time again is just enormous. And I said, why can't you look at that evidence and just say, well, let's wait. Let's, let's, let's find a way to get this provable that it is a safe mechanism. And I said, well, you could submit it to United Riders Under Laboratory, and they said, well, that's, that's for com- consumer pers- uh, purposes only. And I said, that's your out, but that doesn't stop you from being able to submit it to UL. UL will do any test you want them to do. And the reason you won't do that is because our evidence, uh, the test of the people, the, the scientists that have done the test that I'm quoting, are very evident that you are lying. She got all huffy, and I said, "That isn't that. I don't care about that." The same thing happened with the guy from Encore, and I got to a point where I had, I almost lost it. You might say, I said, "You know, in the future, there could very well be a Nuremberg trial where you, sir, will be brought before a court because you have executed." So many people, so many residents and citizens of this country because of your demand that we take an unproven technology and stick it where it's going to hurt us. So where are we now, John? Where are we as a nation? And where where are we going? You've been doing this for two years. What does it feel like? Are we going backwards, forwards, what? There are some major areas where we are winning. We've, like I mentioned, that we've got uh, several, a number of cities. For the first time since Italy was formed in 1990, they have lost membership. That I think is due totally to this grassroots operation and the processes of, of winning little little battles here and there have been tremendous. The biggest problem we have is funding. Uh, if we could get people people to understand that this is a situation where you're going to be confronted with literally what the founding fathers were, 
we are going to have to pledge our honor and our security and our fortunes to preserve what we believe needs to be preserved. We go out and fight, and some, you know, it's, it, whenever I, I speak, uh, I never take a, a, uh, a donation. I, I allow them to accumulate money, and then I donate it back to the club. But uh, at the best, it was like five hundred and eighty dollars for a, for a, an evening that I spoke, and I gave that back. But at the same moment that these people are giving me this five hundred and eighty dollars, uh, we've got George Soros and his uh, utility takeover company uh, writing checks for thirteen, fourteen million. So. The battle is going to be, at some point, we hope to raise enough awareness where people will say, okay, it's founding father time. We need to put ourselves down on it. Uh, we need to put our lives on the line. Uh, uh, Tom DeWeese and all, and, uh, and Shaw and myself and Keoe and, and a number of other speakers on this, uh, on this Agenda 21, we know for a fact that under the current laws, each and every one of us could be arrested and put away where nobody will ever hear of us again because of the laws that have been passed. And no one is fighting those laws and so forth. But when you get to a point where you say, I'd much rather be dead than be living under those despotic rules and regulations, I think some, then we may have a major switch. I, I, I think people are getting to that point. But one of the mistakes I think a lot of people have is a woman in Bastrop came up to me and she said, I have all kinds of weapons in my home and they're never going to put that meter on my house. And I said, okay, let me give you a vision I see. You open the door one morning, ding dong, the doorbell, you open the door, and the thing that's staring you right in the face is a howitzer muzzle. And outside there are a thousand army people. Do you think your boatload of weapons is going to make one bit of difference? And she looked at me and she thought, well, that'll never happen here. And I said, 1932, the head rabbi of Germany had read Mein Kampf, knew what Nietzsche had told, had conversed with Hitler about, and knew that there was a desire to eliminate all Jews on the face of the earth. And his comment, they can't do that, were too big of a group of people for him to accomplish that. And I said, you're saying here that you think you can do that. The only way you could ever stand up to an army that's right in front of your door demanding that you give them up is that when you and your neighbor and a thousand other neighbors lock arms like they did in Concord and face the enemy with your weapons. I guarantee you no army officer would ever come against that body. Hey, John, I'm going to have a lot of questions as I review this, uh, this show. Are you going to come back and talk to us again? Be love to. Love to. Okay, and if anybody wants to get a hold of John Marler, you can email him at uh, jmarler, M-A-R-L-E-R, -E at marfam.com. That's M-A-R-F-A-M.com. John, do you want to repeat that in case nobody can understand me? Yeah, J uh, M A R L E R. That's my name, John Marler, but J Marler at Marfam M A R F A M. That literally means Marler Family dot com. So it's M A R F A M dot com. Um, when you send a request, I'll give you phone numbers at that time and so forth. But uh, any time you uh, desire to have me help, uh, I'd be glad to help. When I do come, I always offer to anyone who can bring a computer, I have right now 142 gigabytes. That's a horrible large number of uh, deals, but the, it's the documentation, videos, and proof of everything I'm saying plus a whole lot more. There's a lot I can't do in an hour or an hour and a half presentation, but uh, anyone that wants to have that information, I'm willing to you, you bring a portable hard drive or anything like that, you can have it. On the um, 13th of the month, I'll be in Bernie, and on the 16th, I'll be up in Tyler. Uh -oh, okay, so you're close. Yeah. 
That's correct. Yeah, Bernie's close, and uh, it may be that people would want to, to come down and, and hear the presentation. And as we go through our talks with you, uh, Steve, uh, we'll go into, you know, I can give you the agenda of the, what I do present, and uh, then we could probably just tackle it one point at a time. Oh, man, that sounds wonderful. I'll give you a call in a couple days. We'll see what we can do. You bet, Steve. Okay, well, thank you, John. You have a good day. You too, Steve. Bye-bye. Uh-huh.